Hi everyone. This is not going to be an actual painting video. This is going to be a video about some of the things that you can do with your paintings. Uh, I know a lot of people do craft fairs or even if you have your own website or you know whatever. There are lots of different things that you can do with your paintings. Uh, lots of different things you can paint on, which I'm sure some of you, or you have already discovered. There's, uh, you know, coffee mugs and bowls and, my, I mean, things like this. I have gotten so many people asking me about buying these. Um, so, you know, something like this. A good, fairly inexpensive item you could make for a craft fair. Um, things like this. You can just paint a... A vase. Now I'm not going to be showing you all this stuff in this video. I mean, I'll show you what I'm doing and I'll tell you about it. Um, I'm not going to take you through the whole process with you watching me because this is stuff that most of you all you don't need to see a video on. If you can do the painting, you can pretty much figure out the rest of it on your own. This is just uh, you know just to give you some ideas for things that you might be able to do in case you haven't thought of doing this with your paintings yet. Not with this, but <laughs> I just painted that. Just taped it up on the sides and poured alcohol ink around it and swished it around there a little. All right, one of the things, and I actually had a couple of comments on this because um, they were seen in the edge of one of my recent videos, is coasters. Now, these are not finished yet. I don't have any here that I can show you that are finished, but this is just to, to show you what I do, and I don't, I had a, I thought I had a little wooden round laid out to show you, but I don't know, I must have forgotten to get it, and I don't see them. Here's some smaller ones, I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is not the same size, but it is the same, the same thing, this is a smaller one. Um, it's just a little unfinished wooden round. Nothing on it. It's not stained. Um, even still a little bit rough around the edges. You can find these on Amazon. Uh, you can find them in arts and craft stores. They usually can get them a little bit cheaper on Amazon buying these by bulk. Uh, and some of the stuff that I'm going to show you all today, I'm sorry, I don't know where I got it. I don't remember. I'll, I have a really bad tendency to sort of, I don't know, be a, a hoarder when it comes to things that I might be able to uh, to paint on or to use it somehow with my paintings. So I pick stuff up uh, frequently from different stores. It comes, I, I can't give you links because I don't remember what places a lot of it came from. I do know that these wooden rounds came from Amazon. Uh, I mean, I, I got some of the stuff that I will show you all came from Walmart. Some of it came from Amazon. Some of it came from Craft Warehouse, which is, um, you, you, they don't have an online store yet. You have to be in the Pacific Northwest here in the U.S. to find a Craft Warehouse, pretty much. So, um, there's, uh, some of it came from Hobby Lobby. Some of it came from Michael's. <laughs> I, I mean, some of it came from the Dollar Tree. Some of it, you know, came from just anywhere that I happened to be that I saw something that looked promising. I just have a tendency to pick that up and see what I can do with it later. So, all right, back to these. All right, so you can see I cut a circle out of a painting. And this is a great idea for paintings that you don't like the whole painting, but you don't want to wipe it, or it's on Yupo, so you can't wipe it. Uh... I cut a circle out of it and just used Mod Podge. I just used this, the standard Mod Podge, nothing special about it or anything, and glued it to this wooden round. Now, I did stain these. I used, uh, wait a minute, I've got it sitting right here. I used this, just this Minwax um, wood penetrating stain. Uh, this color is English chestnut. Doesn't matter what color you use. I've got a color that's called Ipswich Pine, and I don't know what all. There's some a lot of gorgeous colors out there. 
So just a real quick run through, if you've never used wood stain before, there's a few different ways you can put it on. You can just dip a rag in it, rub it on your wood surface, then wipe it off with a clean rag. Well, it's not gonna stay clean for long, but you know what I mean. One that hasn't been dipped in the stain. Um, what I did is used one of these little foam applicators. I don't know that I'll do this again because I did feel like I wasted a lot of stain putting it on with this applicator. It, it just, way too much stain went on that's not gonna absorb, so it was just wasted when I wiped it off, but that's what I did. I put it on with this, and then I just had like a, a old square of cloth. You know, this is just a rag. Basically, this is like an old t-shirt rag that, uh, you know, I cut up. I'd wipe the stain on, and then just take this and, you know, rub it. Always go with the grain of your wood and wipe it back off. Now, once these have dried, and you need to let them dry for at least 24 hours with just the stain on the wood. Oh, let me back up one second. You want to sand these lightly because the edges of these have a few little splinters and just little rough spots. You just want to lightly sand them. You can, with some fine sandpaper, like a 220 grit, or um, this, there's these things like this, this little sanding block that actually came with some wooden rounds that I ordered, so that some bigger ones are like that, that I ordered, um, just so you could finish it off if you wanted to, to smooth out any roughness, so. All right, so get your round, sand it a little, put your stain on, let it dry for at least 24 hours. Now, you may have to go back with another clean rag and wipe it again because if you get too much stain on there, it, it takes it forever to dry and it just doesn't like it. Especially thin wood like this, it's not going to absorb a whole lot of that stain. There's nowhere for it to go. All right, so once your stain is completely dry, um, you want to seal it. Well, depending on what you want to do, I plan on oops, I plan on resining these on the top. So I sealed these with the Camar Spray-On Varnish by Krylon. Sealed both sides with it just to make sure because these wood stains, most of them are oil-based. Now, I honestly don't know if this one was or not. It doesn't say oil based on it, but judging from the way my hands felt, it's definitely got some oil in it because it was greasy feeling on my hands. So, um, I did um, I did spray it with a Camar varnish. All right, this I cut out of a painting now, I did this painting specifically for the coaster project, which, oh, goodness, sorry, I'm knocking stuff left and right. I can't even see it. <laughs> it's full moon. That's what the problem is. Got all the fam tucked into bed and thought I'd work on this video. Well, everybody's being quiet, and I had a few minutes. So, you can see I got, see, there's actually still another one or two coasters up there with these colors, but you can see how many circles you can get out of it. Now, don't throw away your uh, scraps, because that's another thing you can do, is you can make um, a mosaic. I'm sorry, my brain went to sleep for a second. You can make a mosaic out of your scraps. So, you know, every little bit of your painting can be utilized. There doesn't have to be waste, or very, very little waste, anyway. Um, all right, so once everything was dry, I sealed it with Camar. That was dry. I cut out my circles. Okay, the first time I did this, I used uh -huh, uh, wasn't one of. I don't think it was one of these. Oh no, well it was one of these. The first time I did it, I used one of the smaller ones, or several of the smaller ones. Okay, I what I did was traced around it on my painting and then took an X-Acto knife and cut it out. After doing one painting like that, I said, never again. I will not make these if I have to cut them out with an X-Acto knife. My hands hurt so bad for days. Never doing that again. 
So let me show you this lovely creation, which my granddaughters thinks the funniest thing ever because it is, they said, the biggest hole punch in the world, which is pretty much what it is. All right, so these are four inch rounds, which, you know, if you've bought stuff before, you know, they're usually not actually four inches, whatever you get. So, but that's what they're supposed to be is four inch rounds. This cuts a three and a half inch circle. So actually, I guess that would be pretty close to four inches there. This does, it cuts a three and a half inch circle. You can see it actually comes with a, a plate on the bottom, which I took off because I, I don't want it to keep my trash in there because I don't want the part with the hole in it. I want the hole itself. <laughs> so I took the bottom off so that when I, you know, you know, squeeze this down and cut it, then, you know, my piece is just going to pop up in there that I want. I can take it out. Uh, and also, I'll show you. I like this here so I can show you. I'm not going to cut this, but you can see. So you can kind of decide what's, you know, see, I might not really like that part. So I might move it down here and be like, ooh, that looks pretty together or, you know. Although if you want to get as many um, circles as possible, just basically start at one side of your painting and go to the other. Uh, this came from Amazon. I have also seen these. Oh, where did I see them? Michaels, maybe? These big ones? I think it was Michaels. But I did get this one from Amazon. And let me tell you, this is a game changer if you want to make coasters because that, that makes a huge, huge difference. And plus, it's much neater. I mean, your circles are much better. I mean, I had to go back and just trim the edges of my circles constantly because they, I'm not good with an X-Acto knife. So, um, so anyway, used, I put, just painted the Mod Podge onto the back of the circle, then stuck it down on there, you know, did just like I've shown you all in the paintings. I put a piece of uh, uh, parchment paper over top of it and took one of my big craft sticks and just, you know, scraped it all out. The Mod Podge does tend to kind of ooze out around here, so I just, you know, kind of took a little damp rag and wiped that. Once that was done and completely dry, I let them sit for another couple of days just to make sure everything was totally dry. I sealed over the whole thing again with um, another layer of the UV protectant. Now, I had already sealed the painting before I ever started cutting it up, just like I normally would, with a few coats of Camar and then a few coats of the UV protectant. But I just wanted to get that kind of extra seal in there a little bit, just to be on the safe side, um, to, you know, any of the Mod Podge that might have been left on the wood or anything was completely enclosed. Now, what I will do, my next step will be resining these. Um, I will be setting them up. I've got, the girls eat tons of these little fruit cups, and I save their cups. Let me show you. <laughs> these little things. They love these little fruit cups that come with peaches or mandarin oranges or something like that. Well, these things are awesome to use to set stuff up on. So what I'll be doing is doing them like this, and then I'll pour resin over the top. I'm gonna hopefully, I don't have this level right now, but um, my plan is to hopefully keep it from you know pouring off the side. What I can do is I can make a dam around the edge of this with some painter's tape, and then Pour the resin in there that is an extra layer of protection to keep it from coming over the sides um, or you can you know do the the natural dam it'll stop itself as long as you don't go just berserk with pouring tons of it on there and so once I get it resined and the resins dry um, you know may have to do a tiny bit of sanding here there on the edge these little things are little cork pads it's just got a little well, I'd show you, but I can't seem to get it started right now. It's got just a little peel-off back. It's sticky adhesive in there, 
and you can just peel off your back, take and slap that on there, and voila, you've got yourself a coaster after that. Now these, I was a little aggravated to discover, the pad is actually a tiny bit bigger, just the tiniest bit bigger than the wooden round, so I may end up having to trim that off some with an X-Acto knife. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet, so. But anyway, that's what you, that's how you make coasters like these. Um, it's super simple. It is time consuming because there's a lot of steps involved. Uh, price wise, you know, it's, these are not that expensive. I, I can't even remember now. I'd have to look it back up. Um, the stuff, cause I know the, these rounds came from Amazon I'd have, and so did these also came from Amazon. Um, you just have to do better than I do about keeping track of your material costs so that you can figure out what you want to charge for those when you sell them. So, all right, that's the coasters. Uh, next, oh, here's one more thing for the coasters. Let me show you. This, these I got to use as coaster holders. Um, well, these aren't finished right now. So they're, they're a little thinner than they would be, but it's something to hold the coaster. These were a little bigger than I was expecting, so I wasn't real excited about that, but I'm hoping that these will look a little bit better once they have a layer of resin on one side and then the cork on the other side. You know, it's going to kind of get them a little bit thicker in there. Just another little unfinished wood product that, you know, there's one of them that I've gotten stained so that it will match the, the coasters. Uh, just something to keep in mind. You can find anything small like that that um, you might be able to, to um, use as a coaster holder. All right, one of the other things, this is another wooden round, just a much bigger one. I, I have one that's stained, I could show you, but I really don't have a clue what I did with it. So, what did I do with that? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> All right, so anyway, but I do the same process with this. I will sand it down a little bit, I'll stain it, I'll seal it with Camar, I will pick a painting or do a painting specifically for it, um, or I might, you know, take something like this, take my round, you know, just decide what I think is the prettiest part of the painting, and then take my round, just trace around it. I, I wouldn't do it on the front side. I would flip it over and do my drawing on the back, just so I don't mess up any of this. But um, then cut that out and glue it to this and maybe resin over top of it or leave it like it is. You don't even have to resin over top of it. Now, uh, with your scrap from that, now you can see how much kind of, you're going to have all this left. Okay, this is a 9 by 12 painting, so you're going to have all this left. Well, with all that stuff that's left, you can do things like this. There's your little bookmarker. Easy peasy. These are super easy. Um, you, uh, they don't even have to all be the same size. I'll show you. I've got this whole pile of bookmarkers in here. Some of them are skinnier. Some of them are fatter. Some of them are taller. Um, I tried to keep them fairly the same, but, you know, I just hated to waste any of a painting and some of it you know, some of the stuff was just gorgeous. It was the strips that were left, I just thought were beautiful. And so, you know, I didn't want to just waste them because it might be a little bit shorter than one of the other ones. So, but these on average are somewhere around six inches average, six inches long. These little tassels uh, came from Amazon, once again, the place where 90% of things come from. You can get them in bunches. But, well, I guess you have to get them in bunches. Uh, this came from one company. And these came from another company. The multicolored ones. 
that are in there. That's in my food colors. So I'll show you real quick. I saved one. I actually did save one thing to show you all what I do. I I did buy a hole punch for these. This is uh, just a one eighth inch hole. You can kind of I don't know if you can see that or not. The little there teeny hole in there. Just a one eighth of an inch. Uh, just slide it in there at the top. Make sure you've kind of got it centered. You know with your sides there you want your hole to kind of be in the middle and then just punch it it does have a tendency to want to stick this is a heavyweight yupo by the way on this i don't know how well some of the um the thinner stuff would work uh just because it might be I, i'm not sure every all of these that i've done so far have been heavyweight yupo so uh I don't know. I'm not sure how the graphics stuff would work, but I think that it would probably be okay. All right. I punched my hole a little farther down than I like in that one. So then I just stick my loop, which I'm now messing up. Stick it through. And most of you all will know this, but I'm going to show you just in case. Because if I don't, I guarantee I'm going to get questions about how did you tie that on there. So, all right. I stick my loop through the front open the little loop up in the back and then just pull the tassel back through the loop and get it up there and then just snug it down you don't want to pull it tight uh, i'm pretty sure that the tassel would break before the yupo would rip but um that's how you do that and voila you have got a bookmark so that's something else, super inexpensive item to have at craft fairs, things like that, or something for a giveaway. Um, me, I'm getting so much stuff piled up here. Now, the things like this, there are so many things like this that you can use. I'll show you, there's a, see, here's another one that I've got ready. I think I got that at Craft Warehouse. And, there's a long one. This one actually came with um, the twine already on it. And uh, all of these are unfinished when I get them. I just stain them whatever color I want. I just happen to have a preference for dark wood. So most of what I, most of what I do tends to be dark wood. I need to start doing more of the, the lighter wood. Um, with this, now this is a, a long one. I can't remember how long this is, but um, you obviously will have to have bigger paper because there's my 9x12. You can't fit a 9x12 painting on there and make it look good. You're going to have too much space at the edges right there. So. so there's a few things like that. Let me move some mess out of the way. Right here, this is something else. Oh, Sorry, right, I was trying to set stuff in the floor so I could get to it easily, but that's not working well. Um, all right, where did I get these? I'm, I don't remember. I'm almost positive these came from Craft Warehouse. They were having a sale on unfinished wood stuff, which for those of you in the Pacific Northwest, if you have a craft warehouse near you, when they have a sale, awesome. Go get some of their stuff when they have a sale. Uh, they actually had their, uh, the Tim Holtz Ranger alcohol inks. Mm, buy one, get one free, I think it was. Or buy two, get two free or something like that the other day. So I had to get some new inks too. I just had to. Um, so it's just a little, you know, just a little nothing box that I stained. Um, you know, touched up with some sandpaper, stained it. I will, <laughs> believe it or not, I do have more paintings than this one. I'm just keep dragging this one out to show you. Um, you can either specifically do a painting for the top of this, or you can do, like I was talking before, uh, take and cut out one. You can, you know, flip this upside down, your box upside down, and you know, trace around your, so you just flip it over, trace around your edges right there, 
Oh, in case you're wondering about that. Yeah, I'll explain that in a minute. Because all the bookmarkers look like that. Um, cut out your piece. Do the Mod Podge on it. Or put your Mod Podge on your painting. Stick it down. And, you know, wipe all the excess out of it. Make sure you clean it off so you don't have gobs of it sticking out here. And then, the, you know, you can resin over the very top which is probably what I'm gonna do with these. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I mean, obviously I haven't gotten that far with these yet. They've been sealed with the Camar, I just, which I just did a couple of days ago. So there's, I was letting them sit and uh, sort of cure a little bit before I started putting anything else on top of them. Um, yeah, I did want, I meant to mention that with the bookmarks. So, this is one that I did specifically for making things out of, such as bookmarks or coasters or, you know, maybe the top of one of these boxes. And so when I got done with it, uh, like this is the heavyweight Yupo. And when I got done with it, it had stained on the back because it's Yupo and it stains. And I couldn't get a lot of the ink off. So I was like, well, darn it, that is going to just look cruddy on the back of my bookmarks. So I just went over the entire back with a very light wash. I hope y'all can see the, the colors in there. So I just lightly washed the back of the, I had done, I think, three or four, I guess that I was going to make stuff out of. So, but anyway, I, I used the colors that I had kind of used in the um, paintings and just did that light wash so that it kind of hides a lot of the staining. Plus, it just makes it look better. It just, I don't know if you all can see the, the way it looks good or not. From what I can see, it just all kind of looks gray right now in the, in the camera. But, um, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm talking about, but you can still, you can kind of see a little bit of the staining here and there and uh, just in spots, but that really camouflages it, plus it just looks nicer to me than just having this a plain back on it. So, and this way, you know, even each individual bookmark is a hand-painted item. This is different than, you You can make prints. You can print out your painting, you know, scan your painting or, or put it in a copy or whatever, print it out and uh, make stuff out of your prints, which is cool too, and that's a great idea too. But uh, it's still prints. It's not an original this way. You're, every single thing you're doing is is original artwork. It's not a print of artwork. It is the original thing. So to some people, that really means a lot more. All right, here's another project that has involved several steps for me. Um, I was going to make square coasters. I ordered these nice little wooden squares. You can kind of finish the back of this, but there's a reason for that, I'll tell you. Um, I ordered these little wooden squares. I ordered the wooden, I mean the square, um, what you call them? The backing, the cork backing for these. And when I ordered these, I had already tried doing the, um, the round coaster. So I knew, yeah, I want one of these. That was square. I ordered a four inch square hole punch. <coughs> which they did not tell me. Nowhere in the description, anywhere, did it mention that the four inch square is not actually a four inch square. Their idea of a four inch square is measured diagonally. Okay, my husband's father, my father-in-law was a contractor, a builder. My husband helped him for years and years building when somebody says a four inch square to them, this is what they're thinking. It's four inches on each side. That's what I was thinking, or four inches from side to side. However you want to put that. Not diagonally. So, I, my squares ended up, uh, 
much, much smaller than I wanted them to be. I was just playing with the, playing with one. These are some, I, I did some coasters in these red and yellow colors and things. So this is the size that they're four inch square punch punched out. Yes, I was a little ticked off. So, I had to figure out something to do with some of these because I, I my hands just seriously cannot take using an X-Acto knife for very long, especially if you're cutting some of the heavyweight Yupo. It's really difficult to cut. So, what I decided to do with that, this, where did I get this? Uh... I'm almost positive I got this from Craft Warehouse, too. They had all this stuff 60% off or something like that. It was crazy good deal. And so, um, so I did pick up quite a few things from that. I've got a stack of things over there on my shelf right now that I picked up from Craft Warehouse. So, my plan is to do this. Originally, I was just going to cut out a painting and put in there. But I decided, let's make it more interesting. I'm going to put squares in there. And I'm not sure, because this is the same color, I'm not sure how well you all can see that um, in there. And this is a very quicky, messy thing. I did cut these out with the X-Acto knife, which is why I know I really, really hate doing that too. So I'm just going to put them like this on here. And I will, I haven't decided yet if I want to just resin over this part, put the resin on that, then attach it in there. That's actually what I'm leaning towards and leaving my wood uh, non-shiny, just the stained wood. Or you could, you know, glue it all down in there and then pour resin over the whole thing, uh, the whole inside of it, which would be really cool looking too, so... But that's my idea for that. Another idea there for things that you all can do with paintings that maybe you don't necessarily like or things for a craft fair so that you don't end up taking nothing but just um, matted paintings. You know, so it gives you a little bit of variety, gives your customers some choice, uh, it gives you several different price ranges for things. There, there's just so much stuff that you can do. I'm looking around trying to see if there was... Oh, yep. Yeah. One more thing. Let me show you because I do need to... I'll tell you something about these. All right. Another thing you can do is magnets. I know a lot of you all have done acrylic pouring and... Oh, I want my magnet. And have cut out the skins for magnets. So you can do magnets out of this as well. You just buy these little glass cabochons on Amazon, buy a magnet. My magnets are just a touch bigger than I wanted there, but it is what it is. Uh, these, let's see. Yes, I did. I had a hole punch for these, but um, I haven't made these. This was a while, a little while ago that I made these. I didn't like the how much gray magnet I could see around the edge of the um, painting in this because my hole punch was a little bit smaller than the cabochon. So I had just spray painted the magnets with some Rust-Oleum to, uh, to hide that. I used some diamond glaze to attach the cabochon to the painting. Just this stuff. So I used that to attach the cabochon to the painting. Then once that was completely dry, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think, make sure I'm telling you the right order. Yeah, attach the cabochon to the painting. And then once that was completely dry, I used some E6000 glue and glued the magnet to the back of that. Okay, so the... The first time I did these, I used um, paintings that I had done on photo paper because I thought, well, there's something I can do with all these paintings that I've got on this flimsy photo paper. 
Well, no, that was a very, very bad idea. Although I did get some very interesting looks out of it. And depending, well, depending on how decent my photo paper was, but let me show you some of it. Can you see that? How, what that did? The glue soaked through the photo paper. Now this was some really cheap photo paper. This was not even a halfway decent photo paper, but it soaked through right there in the middle and it like dissolved the ink away. So next time I tried it, I used um, <laughs> some photo paper from some better, it was a little bit better, sturdier photo paper that I had some things printed on and thought, well, that'll work good too. Well. It worked interesting. Let me see. Can you all see that? It made like fractals in there. Like, I mean, the only thing I could, with the girls and I had, you know, been to see the movie Frozen 2 not too long before that. So all I could think of was, you know, frost and um, ice crystals. Uh, and that one did the same thing. Several of these did this. Now, when I did these, I waited even longer because I thought, well, maybe I didn't let the, um, the diamond glaze glue dry good. And, you know, and that was the problem. So I waited like three or four days before I glued the magnets onto these and they still, they did this with the, the interesting little fractal looks in there. Now, only certain ones did it. <clears throat> the ones that had um, pink or purple were the ones that were the most likely to end up with these fractals in them. So, uh, it's actually really cool and I may <laughs> experiment at some point just to see if I can make this happen because I think it's very cool, but... Uh, I was very um, surprised to see that. So I would recommend, you know, you can, or well, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, you know, go with heavier weight stuff because you don't want to use thin photo paper and have, this one is actually in better shape than some of them. Some of them, it washed out almost all of the color. It, it just, was bizarre. It's like it just, here's one. Can you see that? It just, I don't know what it did. It, it disappeared the ink. That's the only way I can think of to put it. Some kind of chemical reaction happened and whatever dye is in the ink went bye-bye when it got um, caught up with that glue somehow. Uh, this is for anybody who's wondering, this is the E6000 glue. You can find this all over the place. I, I mean, it's it's not hard to find. Any arts and crafts store is probably going to have it. Walmart has it. Hardware stores have it. It's not hard to find at all. You can get it on Amazon. Um, just wherever. All right. One last thing for right now. This is there's where my stained round went. That's what I was going to show you. Um, if you're using the Nara rounds, these are the perfect size to mount your um, rounds on. So you'll have this nice pretty stained wood edge if you want to stain it, or you can just leave it, the natural wood look. Um, so what I'll do on this one probably is to stain it, uh, uh, resin it, you know, glue that down on there and resin over it. I've got one I can show you that I'd already done. And I'm really sorry, I don't have a video on this one because this was another one of my experimenting things and I did not, I just didn't video it that day. But this was done on an 8 inch Nara round. This is just an 8 inch. Uh, wooden round I got from Amazon. I think it came in a 10 pack maybe. I can't remember the price of them. Um, I did use the uh, lighter color stain on this one. Uh, this is another one I did um, some uh, 
stencil on. I don't know if you can see it or not there. I can see all the reflection from the, the stand there. But, uh, so I just glued it down on there, poured the resin over top of it. And I'm probably actually going to have to do another coat of resin on this one. Because the, I know there's just a spot or two I didn't get it good at the edge. So, what I'll do is just sand it down a little bit with some really fine grain sandpaper, like 220 or something. Just enough to give the, um, the new resin that I pour some grip, something it can kind of stick to. But, so that's what it, you, it'll look like if you just take something like this and mount it to the board, resin over top of it, or you don't even have to resin over top of it. Just mount it to the board. Just make sure you always seal your paintings. Always, always, always. Before you start doing this, make sure that you've done all your coats of Camar varnish and UV protectant because... Otherwise, you're going to have some rather upset customers when their paintings fade away to nothing in a few years. Because this is not even behind glass, if you do it like this. It's not framed to, to protect it at all. So, it definitely has to be sealed. And I would still recommend sealing them even if it's going to be behind a glass frame. Because they can still fade the glass is not going to 100% block those UV rays. It may take it a little bit longer, but uh, they, they definitely can still fade if they're in the light. And you want to give it all the protection you can because you want it to last for as long as you can, for as long as it can. All right, well, I think that that is about it. Um, you know, just keep your mind open when you're out, when you're shopping, uh, if you're, you know, wherever you are, keep your mind open. You never know what kind of stuff you're going to see that you're going to think, oh man, I have got a painting that would be perfect to cut out and put on that. And things like the smaller stuff, get a hold of it, you know, things like this. Now this one's going to have, it's got a lip around the edge, if you can see that where the painting's going to leave. They're still going to have some wood around here, um, which is going to look really good, I think. And that way, if I don't like an entire painting, I can pick the prettiest spot out of it once again. You know, just... Uh, that won't work that way on that one, but turn it that way. And, uh, you know, decide what I think is going to be the prettiest place. Put it on there. Oh, you can see, that cost $3.99. <laughs> this did come from Craft Warehouse. I recognize the price sticker. Um, so, actually, I think I got this one for like $1.99 or $1.79. I can't remember now if it was 60 or 50 or 60% off or something. So, but so, um, uh, put it on there, trace around, cut it out, glue it on, resin if you want to. Um, I still would recommend sealing it again, maybe with the um, triple thick gloss, just to give it a nice glossy finish, which would look really good. And then with your scraps, cut them out, make some um, bookmarks. Although if you're like me, I, I'm a Kindle girl. <laughs> I use, my Kindle has got, I don't even know how many books on it. Because of the amount of traveling that we have had to do, I am an avid reader. If I'm not painting, if I have free time, I'm reading. Uh, it's, you know, every night before bed, I, I read. I cannot go to sleep if I don't lay down in bed and read for at least a few minutes every night before I conk out. So, um, so bookmarks don't really work for me. <laughs> but the girls like them. They use them in their school books and things to help find their place the next day a little bit better. And I know a lot of people don't like um, to read the, to use a Kindle or a Nook or anything. They want an actual paper book, which is great. And I like paper books too. But when you travel a lot, there is nothing like a Kindle. Okay, so there you go. This, you know, hopefully gives you a few ideas for some things that you might want to try to do. I'm sorry, it's not a little more in depth, but. This stuff 
most of it is it's really kind of a no-brainer it, it you just needed to know a little bit about exactly what to to put it on so but I mean you can kind of figure out on your own to cut out squares that fit things or circles that fit things and uh, you know do it like that use the Mod Podge to glue your paintings on to whatever and then seal over top of them with stuff uh, you don't have to have things like this. Now, this was expensive. Uh, it was 20 some dollars, I think, for this thing. It was really expensive for a hole puncher. But it's super heavy, and it punches through that heavyweight Yupo like it's nothing. It has no problem punching right through it. So, uh, that was that's a worthwhile investment if you're going to be making uh, a lot of coasters. Or just a lot of anything where you're going to need those bigger circles like that, like three and a half inch circles. So, all right, well, I uh, hope I covered everything. I hope that y'all find uh, some of this a little bit useful to give you some ideas. You know, I know that um, spring and summer craft shows, uh, arts and crafts, and art in the park, and things like that are going to be coming up uh, within the next few few months or be beginning within the next few months farmers markets out of the farmers market here will be opening in april i think i hope i'm praying i love the farmers market i hate it when it closes in the fall so you know give you some ideas for some alternate things besides just having nothing but a rack of matted paintings sitting out for people because, you know, you're going to have a lot of people who are not going to <clears throat> want to pay uh, a big price for it. I mean, even if you have your work price not that expensive, it's uh, some, especially if you're at a craft fair, people tend to, to think it should be cheaper than what it is. And then you're going to have those who go look at it and go, well, I could do that. And then you say, Really, I, I wish you would try, and I would love to see your work because I bet it would be beautiful. And let them try. They won't say it again, I guarantee it. <laughs> Those of you who have tried this know they are not going to be saying that long if they ever do try it. Um, all right. Also, let me say I am blown away and absolutely just humbled by you all. I, um, y'all, I'm sorry, I'm getting teary. I, um, excuse me one second. <clears throat> I never expected this channel to do what it has done. I, I'm absolutely floored by the support that I have gotten from you all. The amazing comments that Y'all just, you brighten my day. You really do. I, every one of you just means the world to me. I, when I started this channel, it was, you know, partly to keep from going crazy because I had so many people asking me, how do you do that? When I started posting, when I first started painting with AIs and started posting in some Facebook groups, <clears throat> So many people were asking me if I had videos and how do you do this, and I couldn't keep up with the questions. It was so overwhelming, and and as you all know, it's very detailed to try to answer something like that in a Facebook post. So I jumped in with both feet and decided to learn how to make videos, um, which is how this channel was born. And I thought... Um, if I got to 100 subscribers, that I was just going to be blown away if if it ever got that big. I, I did not. I mean, I was thinking, you know, wow, I might actually get to 40 or 50 people who would have watched me do this. And um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I don't know where any tissues are right now, so I'm, I'm wiping my tears away with my shirt. Um uh, last check, <clears throat> the last time I looked at my subscriber count a little earlier this evening, I had 3,110 people. And I, I just don't even really know what to say to you all other than I 
I mean, thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support. Those of you who use my Amazon links for purchasing things, I you, you all just wouldn't believe how much that helps me. Because as you know, the stuff is expensive. The uh, art supplies are just crazy expensive. And, and you know, I'm, I'm certainly not making a ton of money off of Amazon because their commissions are very small. But it's every little bit helps. And it just means the world to me that I know that some of you deliberately do that. That you will shop on Amazon through my links uh, simply as a way of supporting, not just because that's the specific item that you want. And that is just so special. Um, all of you all are just amazing. I'm sorry, I'm um, not sure why. I didn't mean to get all emotional like that. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to say thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and your love and, I mean, all the good feelings that I get from you all. It, uh, it just means the world to me. All of you are like family to me. I have made some wonderful friends through this YouTube channel. And I, but I, I feel like all of you are friends. So, if you need help, you know I will do my best to try and answer your questions. Sometimes I don't really have an answer, but if I don't, I'll tell you. I'm not going to mess around with you and pretend like I know what you should do if I really don't. Because sometimes I just may not be able to, to tell you. So, thank you. Thank you all again. I love you all. And I hope this video was a little bit helpful to you. And I will see you all again soon. Have a great day, everyone.